What is up everybody? Today I've got something a little different for you guys. Now I've been in my new house for quite some time but the one thing I have not installed is the Vive virtual reality system. Now as you can see I've got a contemporary Vive going on here so the one thing I don't want to see are messy cables running up the wall to the two power stations. So for those of you that are thinking about integrating a Vive virtual reality system in a space like this and want to hide the cable clutter, we're going to show you how. So the very first thing you're going to have to do when installing your Vive Virtual Reality System is that you need to establish your play area. As I said in the intro, our play area is going to be the living room right here. And because of that, we now know where to put the two base stations. Now the base stations have a couple things associated with them you need to know. They need to be higher than you so you don't obstruct them. They need line of sight to see each other. And they also need to be in the corners of your play area. So in this case, over in the back corner over there near the dragon's head, that's where one of them's going to go, and the other one's going to go right over here. So before I get too far in this video, I want to make sure we're on the same page. So your Vive virtual reality system is going to have two of these base stations. These can be installed on a tripod down below, same mounts on the back. We're focusing on using the wall mount that comes with this. In our case, this is going to be screwed into the back of this and then mount it up at the wall at some angle. Now the only tricky thing about these really is the power cable. Now the power side is very simple. It's just got a wall board here, DC plug on the other side, and this is gonna go into the back of the base station. Now the trick is we cannot run this through the wall. This is not rated for in-wall use, period. It is against code. So we have to figure out how do we hide this without going inside the wall. So how are we going to do that? So we're going to start by taking a look at this wall right here. This is one of the two walls that I want to install these base stations. Now, conveniently enough, I have an outlet right here. So if I were to install it right here below this beam, I'd be able to simply plug it in the back, drop it down here into the wall, voila, I'm done. However, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see the cable draping over the pictures that I've got here as well as any number of cable clamps that I'm going to do, you know, snake around these photos, or even if I could get a perfectly straight line, it's not going to achieve the look that I want. So one way you could hide this cable is by simply putting the cable inside a track. So I could put my plug down here, install basically a track that sits on the wall, run the cable up, and then cover it that way. So at least I have like a straight vertical line versus this wavy cable. Well, I don't want that either. So what in the world are we going to do since we can't run this cable up the wall from here to there? Well, there is something we can do. We can add our own outlet up top above the base camp behind it near it. So instead of running the actual cable up the wall from this outlet up there, we're simply going to install a new one up here, run Romex that is rated to run behind your wall, attached to this outlet down here. Then we can plug that same wall ward to the base camp. I can sit there and wrap it kind of behind it, tuck that cord away, and so at the very least you have this nice contained little system to house the base camp that can stay permanently on. So that's what we're going to do today. So for those of you that have never seen behind drywall, at the very basic level you have a wood frame. This wood frame has vertical studs, which are 2x4s placed vertically. You have a bottom plate that goes across and a top plate. Now these vertical studs are spaced 16 inches apart, or in some cases maybe even 24 inches apart. They run vertically, and then the drywall is then screwed to this. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the hollow space, which is the cavity in between, and then physically run a Romex cable from this outlet up to the top. Now what's inside this wall is going to completely depend on your house and maybe even the year it was made. In this case, this is an interior wall, so there's not going to be any form of insulation for us to fight against. If this was an exterior wall, you're probably going to have some form of insulation, more than likely fiberglass, that you're going to have to push up against whenever you fish the Romex through. Since this is an interior wall, it's completely hollow, and you can tell just by the sound of it. Now, depending on the year your house was made, that cavity in between the studs could also have an additional wood plank that goes across, typically called a fire stop to help slow the spread of smoke rising up through if a fire were to start down here. Luckily, this house is old enough that it does not have that. 
So for those of you that have a house new enough to have this fire stop in place that's going to block you from running your cable from the bottom to the top, unfortunately you have a little more work to do and I recommend looking up other guides or YouTube videos on how to route wire through a fire stop. In short, you basically have to cut a hole below it, typically like a pumpkin cut, to get access to some form of flap or some kind of hole to get to the fire stop. You can drill a hole through it. Once you've done that, then you can pull your cable up from top to bottom. And then depending on your local code, you might have to fill that hole with kind of uh, fire retardant foam to prevent the rise again of that heat and keep it as effective as it was. Seal the hole, repatch it, then you're good to go. As I stated a second ago, this house is old enough that it does not have a fire stop, and this should be, as far as I can tell, an empty cavity all the way up. So let's get into the tools that you are going to need to do a project similar to this. So before we get started, there are a couple things I have to say right now. I am only a handyman, I'm not a certified electrician, and if you're uncomfortable doing electrical work, I would recommend hiring someone to do so. Now if you're a handyman willing to take on this project, which ultimately I deem very simple and a great skill to have, at the very least you need to consult your local codes to know what you are and aren't allowed to do. Now let's start with what you need to buy. You can buy any of this at your local hardware store, I chose Home Depot, and I bought all of this for less than $20 to add these two outlets. So here's what you need. You first need a wall box. Now this one is for mounting and drywall and what I recommend. You'll need two of these since we're installing two outlets for the two base stations. You need an outlet. In this case, I chose a single one for purely aesthetics. This box does have space for your standard dual outlet you normally see in your wall. I'm going for something that looks as clean as I possibly can, so I went for one. You will need a wall plate to cover it. And then of course you need cable to run up the wall. Now for cable, you need to check your circuit breaker and you need to see what size it is. Is it 15 amp, 20 amp? More than likely, if you're here in the US, it's going to be a 15 amp, 110 volt breaker. In that case, you need 14 gauge cable, which is rated for 15 amps, and then you need to match the number of wires you have. This house is old, so I only need 14 two because all I have is a line, load, and a ground. On newer houses, you might need 14.3, which has line, load, an extra neutral, and a ground. So in this case, again, 14.2, and I am on a 15 amp circuit. If you somehow determine that your circuit is 20 amp, I'd go ahead and recommend buying 20 amp Romax, which is going to be 12 gauge, and go ahead and run up the wall. Now it's going to be extremely likely that someone is going to reach all the way to the top ceiling for this outlet and draw 20 amps from it, but better safe than sorry, because you don't want to pass your home to somebody else they for some reason run 20 amps and then they burn the house down because you didn't use a big enough gauge cable. Then the last thing I think you'll need, you'll need some form of wire nuts to connect this Romex potentially to your outlet. Now depending on the box itself, what's in it, you might be able just to connect this straight to the back of the outlet, then run up the wall and of course connect straight to the outlet that you just bought. So you might not need wire nuts at all. So that's it in terms of what you need to buy. I mean, you're only adding two outlets, so your shopping list is really short. However, your tool list is not. So we're gonna go through the tools that you will need to complete this project. Now, some of these are tailored for our job that we know we are going to encounter, and I'll mention those along the way. So I've grabbed a toolkit with everything that I think we need for our house with this project. Depending on what you are going to encounter, you might need more tools, you might need less, but I'm gonna show you everything that I've grabbed for this project here. I'm gonna lay it out all on the table so you can kind of get a visual impression on everything you need, but feel free to stop this video, take a look, and see what you have in your collection. So I'm gonna to attempt to go in order based on the steps you're gonna to have to take to install this circuit, but I might kind of get them out of order, so just kind of forgive me for that. So one of the first things you're going to need is a stud finder. So wherever you think you want the outlet, you need to check to make sure you're in the cavity and you're not about to put it in a stud itself. Next thing you'll need to do is you'll simply need to mark the box and where you want to cut. And so you'll need a marking tool, AKA a pencil or a pen. Pencil you can at least erase off your wall easily. Once you have marked your box, you'll need to cut it with a drywall saw. Once you have cut your hole, you're going to need a screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver to secure the box to the wall but a drill may make that a little faster and a little easier. Now that you've got your hole cut, you're going to need a push rod or a wire puller or a fish stick to pull Romex up the wall. 
you'll need tape to secure the Romex to it. Uh, any tape will do, but electrical tape isn't very sticky. It's usually strong enough to hold the wire, and it's multi-purpose if you need to do wire nuts and you want to secure your nuts. Electrical tape is a good choice. Now that you have the Romex in place, you're going to need to cut it with a pair of wire cutters, preferably one that also has strippers in it. That way you can remove the insulation around the wire. Before you connect your cable to your outlet, of course, you're going to want to turn off your circuit, and it'll be nice to have a circuit tester so you can see if the lines are still hot. And of course, after you get it connected, it'd be nice to know if you wired it properly by using a plug-in tester. Completely out of order, you'll need a level to level your box. Even more out of order, probably a measuring tape to know where you want to put it and measure the length of Romex you need. So lastly, in our case, the existing outlook boxes here in the house are metal, so we're going to need a hammer and a punch to punch out where we can run the wire through the box itself. So as promised, and in no particular order, here is a visual representation of the tools you may need for your project at your home. <laughs> All right, so on our wall, I'm trying to go from this outlet up to approximately right here. I'm trying to tuck it behind this beam. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to determine where our stud is. I had to remove some photos because I'm trying to get closer to where I'm actually going to put it to sense the stud. I seem to have one right here. So I can mark this with a pen, and I can also measure. So I need to go about an inch and a half out from here is the center of the stud, and this one shows me at about two inches out is the edge of it. So when I go to put my box up here and cut it, I'm gonna to wanna to move two inches out from this, so it's probably going about right here. So because I have more room right here, I'm gonna show you a trick to marking where you want your box. Now, of course, the first thing you have to determine is what orientation you want this in. I'm gonna go vertically with the beam right there, so I'm gonna want this orientation. You're gonna want a level to make sure your box is square and level, so about right there. And then, of course, you have to mark where to cut. Now, when doing so, you have markings right here that sit on top of the drywall. So if you just drag your pencil across the top, do the side edges all around, and then once again, do that bottom edge. When you remove this, you'll see that I now have a rectangle. And of course, as you draw this line out, you get to your edges. So when you drop your saw into it, poke in on any one of these lines, cut all the way up, all the way down, do the same thing for going across. Now to reach up there, of course, I'm gonna have to get a ladder. So I'm gonna hop on the ladder itself, and then we're gonna cut that box up there where I want it. All right, so I've shown you guys how to mark a box. I'm gonna go up here where I want my box and mark it. Now that I've got it placed, before I begin cutting, I'm gonna once again verify that I didn't put it on the stud I was trying to avoid. All right, we're good. So now you've got your drywall saw, which has a sharp tip point. And so now on those lines that you've cut, you're gonna to want to basically jab this into the wall, go ahead and cut this box out. It can fall into the back of the wall or you can pull it out forward depending on how you've cut it. Doesn't matter. It's nice to have a friend to help hold a vacuum or so to catch all the drywall dust that's gonna be coming down. So now you can see that this is what we cut out of the drywall. You can see our hole right here, and while I'm looking into it, I can verify the stud is right here where my stud finder found it. This is important because this is on the opposite side, of course, on the outlet down there at the bottom. So we know that we can go straight up here and we don't have to cross over between a beam. Now, now that I've cut this, you want to go ahead and verify that your box fits, but we're not going to install it permanently. Voila, just like that, we know that the box fits well. Of course, once we connect it with Romex and have it coming through, this is where the outlet's gonna go, then ultimately the wall plate to go over top to hide our cut. For now, go ahead and remove the plate, and then we need to get down to the box down below and go ahead and disconnect that. So the next thing we have to do is we're gonna have to get access to inside this box. I think you see I've got an air freshener, simply remove. You'll typically need a flathead screwdriver to get this middle screw out, pull off the wall plate, and then typically the outlet itself is held in by a Phillips head screwdriver. Now before we even do anything to this, we want to make sure that power is turned off. And so this is when you need to go to your circuit breaker, find this circuit, flip it off. This is where a tester comes in handy. 
So I've got my outlet tester in, I've got lights, of course, being it's on. I'm gonna go to my circuit box now, flip this off. All right, so in typical fashion, this outlet, of course, is connected to our lights. You can see if the outlet is off, that's fine and dandy, but I'm gonna have to go grab some work lights so we can see what we're doing. All right, so now, as you can see, our outlet is off. Now, there could still be, depending on how this is wired, potential for like a hot wire to still be located in here. So having a pin tester is a nice tool. But I'm just gonna unplug this. I've got one flathead screw in the middle. Okay. So now if that's exposed, you can see your outlet and the screws on the side would normally have signal going through them. So it's nice to take your pin tester, make sure they truly are turned off. Yep, we're good. And now you use a Phillips head to get these screws out. I've grabbed a drill to make this process a little easier. Now that those are loose, you can pull this straight out. Of course, you're gonna have wires tucked away behind here, but this is gonna be your first glimpse into what's going on in this box itself. All right, it's at this moment I have to apologize because I realized that we had the camera in manual focus this whole time. Hopefully everything is still passable, but from this point on, everything should be in focus. So now once we pull this out, this is the first glimpse that we really have of what's going on behind this outlet. As you can see, I do have 14 2 wire as I discussed. So I have a line, load, and a ground. That's it. You can see that this outlet has one circuit going in, and then it's continuing on to somewhere else in the house. So I'm going to have to add my Romex to another location here and pass it on through. So now this is a metal box here. So I mentioned that in the tools, we're going to have to have a hammer and a punch to punch out the openings for this. If you have one of the blue boxes, because you have a newer house, back in the back you have tabs you can push to pass cable through. If it is a drywall mounted blue box, you might be best physically pulling the box out to give you more room, kind of like what we have up top where we have just a gaping hole to pass up this cable through. So this is kind of a difficult view, but this is a good glimpse inside the box. Right up there where that light is, see that circle? That's the punch we're talking about that we're going to have to hit with a hammer to give us a hole to run that Romex through. So the hole that I've just opened up, this is where we're going to start with the fishing pole, come up from the bottom and see if we can find that pole all the way up top. Keep in mind, we're not 100% sure what's behind here. Um, off camera, I went with the stud finder, went up, didn't see anything. Could still be something in a way that we don't know about that it didn't pick up. So we're the first. So by fishing up this pole, this is gonna be the first glimpse into whether or not this is super easy or not. Okay, so I've got my fish sticks here. They come in approximately a three foot segment. They're gonna be different based on the ones you have and even how flexible they are, gonna be dependent on which ones you bought. I have enough with me to make it from the bottom of this floor opening to up here. You want probably about a foot coming through on each side. So I'm going to start by putting these together. And I'm going to come through that hole I just made. And I'm going to start fishing this up the wall. And of course, I will know immediately if I hit something on the way. So I'm going to keep going. I know that it's going to take about three of these to get to the top. So now I've run out, I'm going to go through and screw on my next piece. And then hopefully soon, I will hear that I've hit the top up here. And there it is. So I've now collided and can't go any further. Now based on the amount of feet that's in the wall, I should be right up there. If I hit something with only one piece in the wall, you know, I would know that I hit something about this height. But because I've got this much into the wall, that's a good sign. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go up on the ladder and I'm gonna try and find where this is. You can see that I've come in kind of at an angle. So if I wanna see it up there, I'm probably gonna have to readjust. This looks like it should lead me to about right here. So before I even have to get the ladder, I can already see my fish stick right there, which is great. So I didn't hit anything. I can go ahead and pull this out. And now I've got about a foot up as well as some coming down. So if you've made it to this point where you have your fishing rod from the bottom outlet to the new one you've just made, congratulations. This is literally the hardest, most difficult part of this whole thing. Now that it's there, I know that I can easily tape my Romex to it, easily pull it through, and I'll be able to connect these two outlets. This is the scary part because you never know what you're going to encounter on the way up unless you've seen this particular wall without the drywall. So I've got my electrical tape. I've got my Romex already out. I'm simply going to tape this in to the rod. We want enough tape to keep this on here as we pull and give this a lot of force to travel up the wall. It's a good practice 
on the very end to go ahead and give you some tape to almost make this kind of aerodynamic to be pulled up and kind of not get caught on things as we go up. So this should be plenty of electrical tape to keep these from coming apart. And now that I've done that, I'm simply just going to pull this from the top, which is going to push this up through this way. So I'm going to start by grabbing it, start pulling it through. <laughs> Kidding me. Just broke the fish stick. Now, I have found the other end. Now, Romex, of course, is a solid strand. If you want to prevent this from going down the wall, just simply bend it around. That way I've made kind of a, a loop right there. Now that this is through, I've given myself enough length here. I'm just going to unwrap this and then I'm going to use my wire cutters to cut this much off. So I'm just going to be lazy. I'm just going to go ahead and cut it right there. Move my fish sticks and I'm going to cut it about right here. So now I've given myself plenty of room to splice this open, connect it here as well as give myself plenty of room to put this through the blue box that we're putting in and then attach it to our outlet. So before I proceed, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at what kind of electrical environment I need to pair this up with. Now I can see that on the back of this, they've used just the simple push-in connects. And I've got my line over here, my load right here. So I simply all I have to do is match this up. So I've got white on this side where silver is, and then black to gold. Since they've used the push-in, I can do a hook loop and then just connect white to here, gold to here, and then reattach to my ground. So to do that, I need to strip off this insulation. You can use your wire strippers if you got, or even a pair of scissors to get through this first layer. Be wary of cutting too deep, that way you don't cut into the insulation of the wires below it. Once I've got that pulled off, you can now see that again, 14-2 wire, so I just have a line of load a ground that's covered in paper. I can cut off the paper. And these are the three wires I need to connect to the back of this. There's still more insulation on these wires. It's 14 gauge, so you can match it up over here on your wire stripper, so it's 14 gauge solid. So I'm simply gonna line up. I'm gonna give myself, in this case, enough open copper to make a loop to attach to this screw. So, you know, roughly about an inch or so. So I'll sit here, strip that off. You can now see that I've pulled the insulation off leaving copper. Same thing for the black. Now that I've done that, I can now simply take my pliers and actually bend it into a nice little hook shape. This hook shape right here will go to the screw. Now, of course, I'm showing you right now the black one. This is gonna to go to the other side over here. I'm going to go ahead and hook them. Excellent. Now we are ready to attach these to the outlet itself. Black goes to gold, white goes to silver. I'm going to go ahead and position these where I've got silver over here, black over here, and I've moved my ground to where the ground attachment is for the green screw. I'm going to take this loop and get it around this screw. Now that that's around it, I can take my pliers to further close this gap that I've made, and then I can screw down even further. Once I've done that, tighten the screw. And you can see that my loop is closed up We've got a really nice firm connection that's not going anywhere. I'm going to repeat on this side. Once again, verify that you've got a nice solid connection. It's not going anywhere. And so the one thing we want to make sure too is that we don't want a lot of copper exposed because we don't want these to touch. So if you've backed off and have too much copper stripped where maybe you're revealing this much copper, in this case, you know, it could come in contact with a metal plate or metal box that I've got here. This is why they make plastic ones now. Or I could potentially, you know, accidentally touch these wires together. So you want to make sure that when you're coming out the back of here, you, they are insulated. Lastly, there is a green screw for my ground. I'm going to, once again, do the loop method, or I can even wrap it around 
um, the already pre-existing wire here. All right, so that's it. So now this Romex that I've added has been wired up in parallel with everything else in this circuit. Now again, I am not a licensed electrician by any means, but I am confident that I'm at least not gonna burn the house down the way I've done it. Um, please consult your local codes before you put this back in. If you are not comfortable doing this and you don't trust yourself, please call an electrician to do it. But now that I've got it connected, this is all I need this box for. I now have power going up to our new box up there, and all we're gonna have to do is take our new outlet, attach it to the other end of the Romex, and we're gonna have our first outlet. So I'm gonna take my drill, get these back into place, and box everything up. And there we go, we've rebuttoned this back up. We are now going to rinse and repeat with our new box up here. So now that we've finished that connection down here, we can focus on the connection that we've run up to the top. Now that we have the Romex here, it's at this point we can permanently install this box. Now these blue boxes have tabs in the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our thumb in here, finger, or even a flathead screwdriver, push these up and this is gonna open up enough room to run this Romex through. So as you can see, I've made a gap. I'm now going to push the Romex through. I'm gonna get these flaps flattened in, get the box put in place, pull my Romex in to make sure I have enough, and then now I'm gonna take my drill, tighten this box into place. There we go. Now that the wall plate's in, I would simply repeat the same process we used to connect the bottom outlet. I'm going to strip off the white insulation, reveal the other white and black, and then for the connector that I've bought for the other outlet, I'm going to show you how to do the push-in technique that they did on the back of that. So now this outlet looks a little different than the one we were doing before. And so go ahead and examine the back of your outlet and how it wants things to connect. So this one actually has holes where I don't have to make that loop. So what I can do instead, keep the wire straight, but it's gonna have a depth chart on here and how long and how much it wants you to strip. And I don't know if you can see this on camera, but it does have a depth gauge right here on how much insulation I should strip. Yours might look a little different. Once I've stripped that much, I'll simply be able to Put it the matching color, so again black to gold, white to silver, clamp the screw down and a little clamp will come in and hold them in place. So I'm taking a look at my strip gauge now and then I'm going to mimic that on the actual copper. Okay, now I'm going to come in and insert them. So again, black to gold. Check your connection, nice and firm. Same thing for the silver. I don't have any copper showing on either side. And then lastly for my ground, I've got to do the loop method to get it onto that screw. So that's it. This is your first time doing it. You've done your first electrical connection and added your first little circuit. Now that that's done, it's just simply a matter of installing this into the box, putting the screws in. Again, a drill will make this a lot faster. There we go. So now what we need to do, take our wall plate. Again, for mine, I've gone for a single because I'm trying to make this as clean as possible. It's actually cheaper to put a dual outlet because they mass produce those so much more than they do these. But this is the aesthetic I'm going for. If you want to go ahead and add two outlets, because, you know, why not? You might use it for something else down the road. Go right ahead. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is our circuit. We have now added a place for our base station to plug into up here that is more out of sight than having a cable run from there all the way up the wall. Next step, turn your circuit back on with the circuit breaker, and we're going to test to make sure that we've got this wired properly 
with the tester that we had before. These will tell you and send you out a code. If we have two yellow lights, it'll tell us that the wiring is correct. So we're going to both test the original outlet that we had down at the bottom. I didn't change anything in the back, so it should still be the same, but just to make sure something didn't come loose when we messed that up. And then we will test that circuit as well before we plug anything into it. So I'm gonna go flip the breaker back on. Lights came back on, that's a good sign. Gonna go ahead and test the original outlet, which we know was working before I messed with it. I've got my two yellow lights. This code indicates that the wiring is still correct. For good measure, I'll test both, even though the continuity that's behind there shouldn't have changed. And then lastly, our new outlet. And now that it's in, once again, two lights, it's correct. There you go. You have done, potentially, your first electrical job. Now that this is here, the one thing I didn't go over was actually mounting the base station. Now your mounting is going to be different based on whatever you're doing here. Maybe you're going to mount it onto a stud, so you just need kind of general purpose wood screws. Go straight through the mount into that. If you're going in drywall like me, because I'm going to probably intentionally put it right below this, then I'm going to get some drywall anchors and mount it that way. So let's go ahead and get a basic look as to how this is going to work. This is my mount. As you can see, it simply has two holes. Like I said, if you're going to mount it onto a stud, like if I chose to do it right here, which I might just do because it'd be, it'd be really easy, I can screw into it. You know, I'd probably get my level, line it up, mark my screw holes. That way when I come back with a drill, I can just drive it in right there. The base station is going to get screwed into the back, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, as you can see, I've got this beam right beside it. So I wish, in a perfect world, I probably could have done it right beside it, really tucked all this in neatly together, but unfortunately, I need to go below it, because as we talked in the very beginning of this video, line of sight between these doesn't need to be obstructed. So I need to go below my beam right here. So this is just kind of a test fit to see what I'm looking at. If I do go for the stud, it does look pretty good, actually. You can see that if I have the wall warp plugged in, it's going to be angled somewhere around here and I can easily kind of drop to the back of this. So instead of going over here, I potentially had more wire if I go over to the stud. Plus it'll make it easier. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some general purpose wood screws and I'm going to go ahead and mount this to that wall. Now if you have drywall anchors because you're going into drywall, you need to specifically look at the rules itself of the product you bought. It'll tell you what size to tap for the anchor size. And then you're going to put it, you're going to drill a hole, get the anchor in there, and then you can screw it into it. In my case, I'm going to go to the stud, so I'm just going to get some general purpose wood screws, drill straight into it once I have it level. So now I'm going to mount this on the wall. Just like I said, I'm going to go for the stud. I know it's right here because I can visually see it. I'm going to plant this where I want it, and I'm going to go ahead and level it. Once I've done that, I'm going to mark the center of my holes. Now that I've got them marked, I can simply hold this back up once I've got my screws and go straight through. There we go. So I've got this mounted. You can see it's super secure because I'm straight into the stud. I'm going to get my wall warp plugged in right here. I'm going to get the base station screwed onto the back. And I'm probably going to take all my excess cord, probably sit here and either wrap it around the back of this, maybe even around the wall warp, whatever I can to condense all that electrical cable into this one area. Take a look at how much cleaner this is than running that wall wart from here up the wall. Now you can see that behind it, you know, it kind of looks like a little kind of Frankenstein mummy wrap going on back here. But ultimately, when you're viewing it from afar, it's a nice clean mount here. And even better, you can see the look of our circuit as a whole. And you can see that this is very clean. You just see the wall wart, you see one cable drop down, you really can't even see the rest of the cable right there. All right, that's it. You've installed your very first base station. I love the way this turns out. It's very clean. And my last house, I did have it running up the wall, drove me crazy. So I'm really happy to see how this turned out. I hope it helps you get some insight into how to permanently install these in a location that's not so obtrusive. We're going to rinse and repeat for the second one, and then we can finally enjoy our vibe.